Good morning, Ben. Thanks for your time. Appreciate this. Let's start with the latest arrival, uh, Luke McCormick. Uh, what, what do you see in him? What would he bring to the squad? Um, quality and energy. Uh, he's, got, uh, he's got great energy, uh, real drive as a, as a midfield player. Um, and he's also got really good quality on the ball. Um, Luke's also got an eye for goal. He, you know, he will get into the box regularly and gives a, a threat for midfield in that respect. Um, and he's also a really good character. Um, you know, Jack Meeshaw knew him well from his time at Chelsea. Um, we also spoke to the academy staff and the first team staff where he's been training with their group regularly. So they spoke really well of him um, in terms of his background and character. So um, we're delighted to have him on board and thinks he gives us, um, he gives us a little bit, something a little bit different in that midfield. Yeah. Is he, uh, is he going to go straight into the, to the team for tomorrow? I mean, I guess that's without giving too much away. He's someone, obviously, you want to get involved as soon as you possibly can. Yeah, he's certainly in contention. You know, he's trained well this week. He's fitted in really well. Um, so he certainly comes into contention tomorrow, whether that's starting or whether that's from the bench. Um, but, you know, we're pleased to have him in. And like I say, I think it just strengthens us that little bit more. Yeah. And, and are you still looking to add to your squad further now? Yes, we are. We are. We're still. We're still active. We're still looking for um, the right players. Um, so I think we've got a good nucleus. And I've said this for a few weeks now. We're just looking for those final additions that we think can um, just give us a little bit extra and give us the the balance um, and the depth to the squad that we want. Yeah. Let's concentrate on Doncaster tomorrow. Then, uh, what kind of a game are you expecting tomorrow up there? Uh, a tough game. I think they're uh, a good side. Um, you know, Darren Moore, Jamie Smith, two people that I know very well, uh, great guys, very good coaches. Um, and I think they've got uh, a very well organised team, a very well coached team. Um, I think what Doncaster have done well last couple of years is they've got a good spine um, and they've been consistent in terms of back four and Ben Whiteman. Um, but then they've also used the loan market really well in terms of front players and, and young players from, from um, Premier League and Championship clubs. So um, they're a good team. They've had a good start. Um, and we know what a, what a good test it's going to be for us tomorrow. Yeah. Do you expect them to be in the mix at the end of the season? I think they've got every every chance. Um, I think you could say that about a number of teams um, across this league. You know, I think we've, we've just played two of the teams that, in my opinion, are going to be the benchmark uh, in Sunderland and Ipswich. Um, and, and after that, you know, there's a lot of teams that will be competing to, to be up the top of the league and try and push into those playoff spots. And um, with, with Darren as manager and with the, the, the players that they've got, they've certainly got the potential to do that. Yeah, and you say you know Darren very well. Does that help in some ways when you're playing against someone that you're familiar with? I don't think so. I, I, you, know, I, I, you know, he's a great guy, as I say. He's a very good coach. Um, but it's, it, it's about the teams on the pitch. Um, and, and what they do and how they play. So, um, you know, I think they've been very consistent in how they've played over the last two seasons. Um, and they've done it very well. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's just a case of analysing the team rather rather than the manager. Yeah, I mean, the first win from a Rovers point of view, first win is always hard to find. It's always crucial, of course, but it's always difficult to get, isn't it? But as you say, that the first two games you've had, you have played against teams that are expected to be in the mix at the end of it. So um, I, I guess from your point of view, you'll say, do you feel that too much is being made about the, uh, the start to the, the season without having a win at this stage? Uh, not really. No, we want to get the first win on the board as, as soon as possible, but I would certainly say that that pressure's on me, not the players. Um, you know, and, I, and I'm comfortable with that. That's the nature of the job. As you say, we've played Sunderland and Ipswich, who, um, you know, two very good squads, very good managers. I, you know, fully expect them to be, uh, you know, challenging at the top of the league and pushing for promotion. Um, and it is fine margins, you know, Sunderland, mm. uh, you know, we're 1 0 up. There's a, there should have been a second yellow card to, to one of their players, which has since been admitted to us. And that's the fine margin sometimes you're talking about in football because, you know, they go down to 10 men when we're 1-0 up around 55 minutes. We've got a fantastic chance of going on and winning the game. Um, so sometimes it's just fine margins in football. But, you know, we've, we've focused on us and our process and, and the work that we do day in, day out. Um, and we know if we keep doing that, that wins will come. Um, and we're, we're positive we can have a good season. 
Yeah, and, and I guess from from the same point of view, really, I, I guess when that first win comes, it can give you that confidence. Things can change very quickly, can't they, in the, in the table, especially this early in the season. A couple of wins together can shoot you right up the table. Without doubt, you know, and um, I think every game is winnable in, in this league. You know, we've, 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 we've pushed hard at Sunderland and nearly come away with a win and got the point. There wasn't much in the game against Dipswich last week. They finished the stronger. Um, so, like I say, I think we've seen the benchmark of two of the top teams in this league and um, and, and we've got more to come. So, um, yeah. I think you're right. It's just that bit of confidence and bit of momentum, which, um, you know, as a club, we, we had a really good result against Sunderland and then lockdown kicked in, which I think would have given us that confidence and momentum. Um, and when we get that first win on the board this season, I think likewise. So, um, but again, that's that's not on the players. That's on me. Uh, in in terms of in terms of any pressure, you know, I just want them to focus on their jobs and go and play and do what we do day in day out. Yeah, Doncaster haven't been the the best of opponents uh, at Four Rovers in in recent years. Going back, uh, Rovers don't have the best of records against them. Is that something that can get in the minds? Uh, do do you feel? Do you pay attention to those sort of records? I know it's obviously a completely different squad, completely different manager, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but do you pay attention to previous records? No, I don't. No, not at all. It's on tomorrow. You know, it's uh, whichever team performs better tomorrow will win the game. Uh, it's as simple as that. So all our focus is on is on that process about how we go and how we win the game. Um, and we'll be giving everything to do that. Yeah. And just finally from me, Ben, since we last spoke to you, of course, it's been announced that fans' hopes of returning to the grounds, have, that's been put on the shelf, of course. A uh, big blow for everyone concerned, isn't it? Uh, how crucial is it for a club like Rovers to get fans back as soon as possible? Absolutely. You know, not just us, but I think every every football league club, certainly. Um, and even even below that, uh, you know, I know that the Premier League are also desperate to get supporters back in. You know, it's firstly from a financial point of view, you know, it's absolutely imperative to the, the long-term future of football clubs, um, which is so vital to to their communities. Um, and also for the game itself, you know, I've said several times now, the game is not the same without the supporters. You know, it's, um, it's the best sport in the world. It's a, it's a working class sport in this country. Um, it means so much to so many. Um, health does come first, but we do want to get supporters back into the game as, as early as it's possibly safe to do so. So, you know, hopefully we can, um, together, we can, we can beat this virus and we can get through this, this situation. And then the sooner that we can get football back to, to normal, if you like, in terms of crowds being allowed back in and that, that support for teams, certainly for us, it's essential and, and also for football in general. Yeah, good luck tomorrow, Ben. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.